Our exploration of the rather universal rules of thumb for a successful organ project moved from the general to the specific. Let's approach the inspection of this organ in the same way. The church nave is blessed with a good acoustic. Why? The space is tall, fairly narrow, has an abundance of hard surfaces, and enough detail to prevent standing waves and other sound disturbances that destroy clarity of sound. The speaking portion of the organ is on the central axis and located up high so that the sound radiates downward rather than striking one in the face. You will notice that a central window led the organ builder to design divided organ cases that contain the internal sound producing portions of the instrument. The functioning gold facade pipes draw attention to the window and to the tabernacle and altar area below, much as an ornate gold frame does for a fine painting. You will see when Patrick takes you on a tour of the inside of the organ that the same creativity is used for the placement of the mechanism and pipes for the best possible projection of sound and also for ease of tuning and maintenance. An organ console must be both attractive as a piece of church furniture and also functional for the organist. It must be like a well thought out workshop or kitchen where all needed tools are within easy reach and yet the organist must be able to see and often be seen by other participating musicians. Here we have a movable console of select hard woods with raised panels and carvings that display the care and craftsmanship that has been lavished on both the seen and unseen parts of the organ. Yet, because of its design, the organist is able to view all that is going on around him or her and also be seen for necessary musical cues transmitted by hand gesture, nod of the head, or even subtle body language. The three keyboards, or manuals, are joined by one for the feet, and each controls a separate section of the organ, which are called divisions. The manuals are flanked by oblique panels, called jams, that contain the stop controls called stop knobs that control the individual sets of pipes. The stop knobs are organized by division, pitch level, and tone color for easy access while playing. Above the pedal board are two expression pedals that control the dynamic projection level of the two divisions, and a third pedal called crescendo, which brings on stops in progression from softest to loudest. These are joined by numerous thumb buttons called pistons beneath the manuals and round chrome toe studs above the pedal board, which allow the organist to access selected combinations of stops by pre-programming and then simply touching one at the appropriate musical moment. All of the sets of pipes, called ranks, are divided into four basic families, much like the families of instruments in a symphony orchestra. In the orchestra, we label the families string, woodwind, brass, and percussion. The families of sound in an organ are principal, flute, string, and reed. Let's begin our sound exploration by listening to the stops located in the great division of the organ. The great is the primary division of an organ. We begin with the principal family because again, this family contains the stops having a sound that is indigenous to the organ and around which all other families of stops are related. We experience this sound most often when the organ accompanies a congregational hymn. Let's first listen to the eight-foot principle. The eight designates a unison pitch stop, and the longest pipe in that stop actually has a resonator that is eight feet long. Here's the sound. Four. 
full, rich, clear, and inviting participation. It's joined by the four-foot octave, which is its companion and adds clarity and a pitch exactly an octave above unison. A third rank of pipes, the 15th at two foot, goes up another octave and adds that much more clarity and uh, definition to the sound. To cap this principal chorus, we have a stop called Forniture, a mixture stop, which has several ranks of pipes, in this case, five ranks of pipes that play five pipes for every note. And so when it is drawn, it provides yet more overtones so that the sound is even more brilliant, clear, incisive, and exactly what you want to hear when it's time to sing. I'm going to add just a little pedal so that we have the full feeling of the great principal chorus. The second color and family of sounds we're going to look at on the great organ are the flutes. And we have several here in the great. At unison pitch, we have a chimney flute. And that's an interesting pipe that has a cap on it and then a little metal chimney that adds a certain kind of timbre or color to the sound. It has its companion, a set of pipes that are open at the top, a four-foot whole floida, which uh, again adds color and clarity to the sound. A 16-foot Borden uh, is adds depth and weight to the sound. going to leave the string family uh, until we get to the swell organ because the string has been borrowed from the swell division uh, because of space considerations and we're going to go on to the fourth family of sound in this division, the reeds, and we have a brilliant trumpet. <laughs> trumpet works not only as a solo stop, but also as an ensemble stop, and when used with the full principal chorus oh, as its friends, it creates this very full sound for the division. <laughs> Thank you. 
We proceed now to the swell division, so named because it has a set of large wooden shades that control the egress of sound much the way a Venetian blind controls the amount of light let into a room, opening and closing. Here we have the stops of the principal family, beginning with the violin diapason. The flute family is represented by the following stops. A stop diapason. Its companion, the four-foot harmonic flute. I'm going to add just a little bit of pedal for this famous piece. The string family, while imitative in a general way of uh, the orchestral instrument, for which the stops are named, are generally stops of a moderate to soft dynamic with a fairly high overtone content and a clear, incisive sound. These stops are extremely useful for vocal, solo, and choral accompaniments, as well as much organ literature of the 19th century. We have a viol de gamme, It has a companion stop, a celeste, which is tuned just a little bit sharp, and the waves that are set up between the two tunings produce this wonderful undulating tone. The fourth family of organ sound in the swell are the reeds. And there are two reeds in the trumpets, and these are represented uh, by the trumpet stop here. And the oboe stop. If you add all of those together, you get this wonderful full reed chorus sound. And also, it's a good demonstration of how these swell shades work. On to the third manual, the solo. This keyboard combines the triple purpose of featuring stops of a distinct tone color used to highlight a particular melodic idea, hence the name of the division, solo. Secondly, it contains some of the most quiet sounds found in the organ, and thirdly, through couplers, provides a gathering space for other divisional sounds which help with graded dynamic shadings. You know, a pianist simply pushes the key more forcefully to affect a crescendo. The organist must plan a gradation of stops coordinated with swell shade movement. Finally, we reach the pedal division. It contains ranks which provide both low foundational sounds but all 
also, one is able to play a melody In conclusion, let's explore using all of these resources together with excerpts from hymns and a few measures of well-known organ selections. <laughs> 